to another video by Royal Christ College. So in Philippians 4.13 it says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So today's video we're going to be talking about the muscles of the back. So we can start with the extrinsic muscles. These include the trapezius muscle. Then we have the levator scapulae muscle, which elevates the scapula. Moving on into the rhomboid minor and the rhomboid major muscles. And finally we have the posterior serratus or the serratus posterior superior. And there's an um, inferior as well. So you can see the descending part of the trapezius and then now we have a transverse part and we also have a ascending part. So the trapezius is made up of three different parts. So we have the descending, transverse as well as the descending. All three superficially makes the trapezius muscle which is the most superficial muscle of the back. Now you can pause the video from now on because I would have the origins and insertions in the nerve supply. So the descending part of the trapezius muscle is usually originates in the external occipital protuberance and the inserts into the posterior aspect of the lateral clavicle and the acromion of the scapulae. The transverse part on the other hand you can see from the image is also starts from the spinous processes and inserts into the acromion of the scapulae and likewise the descending part or the ascending part which is the very bottom part those start on the spinous process from T5 to T12 and inserts itself into the acromioclavicular joints as well. The next set of muscles. Here we have the rhomboid minor muscle followed by the rhomboid major just below now highlighted on the screen. Now if we were to talk in terms of the insertions of these muscles, especially the rhomboid minor and the rhomboid major, there's common things included. The origin starts from a spinous process of T2 to G5 with insertion in the medial border of the scapulae and the action remains to retract downwardly as well as the pectoral girdle and the acromioclavicular joint. Then we have the levator scapulae muscle. Here the origin is usually from the transverse process of C1 to C2 with the insertion of the superior angle of the scapula and the medial border of the spine of the scapula is to elevate and retract the scapula backwards. So if we remove these three muscles then we can move on to the deep muscles of the back. So first we have splen splenius capitis muscle, capitis meaning the head, it directly inserts into the head. Then we also have a second splenius which is known as splenius cervix, cervices muscle. Then if we move on, what we have is the next deep muscle which is semispinalis capitis muscle. This is very important because the origin and insertion really matters and it's usually involved in hyperextension of the neck. The origin is from the C4 to C7 vertebrae or T1 to T6 and inserts into the occipital inferior nuclear line of the occipital bone. Next we have the semispinalis cervices muscle. Again the same functions and the origin slightly lower this time starting from T1 to T6 and inserts into the spinous process of C2 to C5. Again the extends and rotates the necks of the cervical vertebral joints. Finally we have the semispinalis thoracis muscle. So far you've noticed there's three semispinalises, right? In this thoracis we have the origin starting from T6 to T11 with insertion of C6 to T4 and the action is to extend and rotate the trunk and usually these nerves, the nerve supplyings are the medial branch of the posterior rami of the thoracics. So now I've highlighted all three of the semispinalis group. So just to get an idea of there's three semispinalises, capitis, services and thoracis. So pause the video and make sure you are familiarize yourself with all these three different muscles because during the cadaver examination you may be asked to identify each of them. Now moving on, we have another secondary deeper group known as the spinalis services. These are usually found more medial or more closer to the vertebrae. They have origin on the C7 to T2 vertebrae with the insertion in C2 to C4 and the action again is to extend with a nerve supply coming from the lower and cervical upper thoracic nerves. And we also have a spina, spinalis thoracis muscle. So in this group we have two, cervices and thoracis. Here again the origin is much lower, T11 to L3. And the insertions of, are in the vertebrae again, extends and laterally flexes the trunk. So these two muscles together, the spinalis has two groups. So it has a cervices as well as a thoracis. It does not have a um, capitis nor a lumborum. Longismus, now further lateral but still in the middle of the bone, has a longismus capitis. And then further down, the next highlighted is longismus cervices. And then also the next one down and further to the... So as you're going down, you can see that this moving laterally and the muscles are also getting bigger and thicker. 
So now highlighted we have the longismus thoracis. So you can see the longismus family, who is more deeper, has a three components. And in general, all three of these, I'm not going to go into detail on each one, but in general, all three of these muscles, they have a common origin and common um, job of function. So you've had, in the on screen, you've had us all three longismus, and I'm just going to speak on in general. They start off in the spinous process of L1 to L5 with insertion of the transverse process of the lumbar and thoracic vertebrae, and the action is to extend and laterally flex the trunk. Now we have a long muscle in the medial, right next to the um, vertebrae known as the multifidius. This is the longest muscle. It has no different parts. It starts very top and it ends directly into the iliac crest. Here the origin is in the iliac crest or the posterior aspirate of the sacrum and inserts into the angle of the fifth and the tenth ribs. Action again is to extend and laterally flex the trunk. Now more to the lateral side, to us more closer to the shoulder girdle, we have iliocostalis. So ilio meaning it starts from the iliac and all the way to the costa means the vertebrae starts from the C4 to C6 vertebrae and the action is mainly to extend and laterally flex the neck as well as cervical vertebral joints. We also have iliocostalis thoracis and then we also have iliocostalis lumbaris which is slightly below. The costa, uh, thoracis starts off, you can pause the screen and read what's written on the screen uh, and the lumborum is the most important one because during deadlifts and maneuvers which involve back lifting, this is the muscle that's most commonly injured. They are supplied from the nerves of the lumbar and the posterior rami of thoracic nerves. So remember that again, there's three components to the iliocostalis family, which include iliocostalis services, thoracis, and lumborum. These muscles can be very confusing because there is highly dense amount of muscles here in this region. So as you go down and it's almost like you're peeling the layer of onion, it gets longer and thicker and this family was known as iliocostalis. Now finally, and the final muscle that we have is muscles of the back of the head. Here we on highlight on the screen is a rectus capitis minor. I know this might seem confusing because I don't have the uh, right writings up on the screen. Then we have the next muscle which is highlighted is the rectus major so the rectus capitis major so i know you are usually you're thinking major should come first but the small muscle which was highlighted first i.e highlighted on the screen now is the rectus capitis minor and the big one just below it is the rectus capitis major or superior if you want to call it here are these both muscles i'm now the next one highlighted on the screen is the obliquus major so the oblique because it's in the shape of an oblique as you can see and the one just slightly above it, more lateral, near the near the mastalocloid mastoid, which is going to be highlighted on your screen now. This one, these both muscles are involved. Both the one that's highlighted now is the obliquus um, minor, or you can say obliquus um, inferior. Some book textbooks has it as minor. So now we have the obliquus superior or the major, and then the other one was the obliquus minor. So going from the start we have rectus capitis minor, rectus capitis superior, we have obliquus major and then we have obliquus minor. These muscles all to come together to hyperextend the neck as well as rotate it internally as well as externally. So you can imagine when these muscles contract they cause hyperextension of the neck. Thank you for watching the video on this muscles at the back. I hope this video was informative. Please do subscribe to the channel and share and look out for more videos.